Welcome to Sunday Worship with Life at Tupelo. We pray that you're ready to experience a God-inspired service with us here today. If you are a first-time guest attending in person, we have a free gift for you at our hospitality desk located in the main entrance of our church. If you're watching our online service, please check in and share our service with your friends and family on your social media feed. We are incredibly honored that you have joined us for worship today. And here is this week's announcements. Following today's worship service, this Sunday afternoon in our fellowship hall is our Vita in Tupelo Spanish worship service at 3 p.m. Join Reverend Armando Loyola and congregation for an amazing worship service and preaching of the Word of the Lord. On Wednesday night, December 2nd at 7 p.m. is our midweek pre-service prayer meeting held here in the main sanctuary. Thank you to those who come early and set the atmosphere with prayer and worship on a weekly basis. Following midweek prayer, our first Wednesday format is Mosaic Night with all life groups coming together worshiping in the main sanctuary. This emphasized service will begin promptly at 7.30 p.m. as it highlights our multi-generational, multi-racial church. Young and old, everyone is valued and loved here at Life at Tupelo. And finally, on Friday morning, December 4th at 9 a.m. is our weekly corporate prayer meeting held here in the main sanctuary. Thank you to our prayer warriors who consistently meet for this faith-building gathering. For all updates and announcements, visit our website at lifeattupelo.com. Thank you again for attending and watching our Sunday worship. Here at Life at Tupelo, we are a church where everyone is welcome, nobody's perfect, and anything is possible. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's all stand this morning. So good to be in the house of the Lord. I already feel the presence of the Lord in here in prayer this morning. We get ready to start. He's here today. If Jesus wasn't here, this would just be a social gathering. We'd just be getting together with friends. And I'm glad to see you. I hope you're glad to see me. But I want to see the Lord today in this house today. And that's what it's all about. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those of you joining us online, we ask you to comment. Uh, send a comment out there so that we know that you are watching with us today. And we pray that you join with us and the same Spirit of the Lord that is here will fall into homes and wherever you're watching from today, that the Lord be lifted up. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen? Well, you're in for a treat today. It's a, it's a homecoming type service. You're going to hear some old... It's almost going to be a step back. I wanted to shout in the back back there when I came in or when I came in the door listening to the practice. So, But the main thing is, is that we worship the Lord, right? Amen. Has God been good to anybody? Come on, has he been good to you? Michael Tucker told the story of, of a young man sitting in a worship service, and he came in in a wheelchair, and and, and his little body was strapped to that wheelchair because of the disease that, that was in his body. And, and just he would shake himself out of the wheelchair. But they started singing. I was so moved listening and watching this. They started singing, God has been good to me. And he unstrapped himself in the middle of that song. And his body just slid out on the floor. Brother Healy crawled to the altar, raising his hand. God has been good to me. Do you feel that way today? Come on. If you've got a, a body and you're able to get up today and, you, and you've got health and you're able to be in the house of the Lord, those of you joining online, if you're able to stand, if you're able to lift your hands, God has been good to us and we are here to worship Jesus. We are here to lift him up. The Bible says if we draw nigh unto him with our worship, that he will draw nigh unto us. Let's let him know today as the singers sing and lead us in worship. Let's join them today and let him know that we love him and that we are thankful for what he has done. God has been good to me. Give me that
in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, praise God. I feel like we're standing in liquid glory right now. How many feel the awesome, glorious power is in this house right now? And I pray that those that are watching on Facebook and other means are feeling the same thing we're feeling in here right now. It's so great to see all of you here. How many had a wonderful Thanksgiving? Amen. Well, to be honest with you, I woke up early this morning and I thought about jumping up and clicking my heels together. And then reality set in. But Anderson, I realized I couldn't, so I just got up, thanking the Lord for another day and how good he has been. Amen. Now, there are many ways that we worship. You worship just like you are right now. We clap our hands. We raise them to the Lord. We speak words of praise. Sometimes we shout. Sometimes we run the aisles. And there are many ways that we worship. But I tell you another way to worship, and that is your, your giving. You're faithful in your giving, and we appreciate that. Let me remind all of you that there are four ways to give here at uh, Live at Tupelo. At the hospitality desk, there is a basket out there. And if you're like me, I'm old-fashioned, so I write a check and put it in the basket. Or if you choose, you can uh, give at lifetupelo.com. And then Faith Teams app, you can also give. And then number four, text to give, 662-546-1736. And there's no excuse for not giving to Life at Tupelo when you have all these opportunities. How many know the Lord loves a cheerful giver? Amen. So thank you for your giving. That is a way also that we worship the Lord. Let's worship him with a head and clap right now. You may be seated.
the time you first met the Lord. Why don't you take about 30 seconds here and why don't we stand all over this place? Because I'm convinced when you start thinking about the first time you met the Lord, when you start thinking about the first time he washed all your sins away, when you start thinking about the mess you were in the night you came to the altar, I'm convinced you'll praise him a little bit more. I'm convinced you'll lift your hands a little bit higher. Hallelujah, you got to be born again. if he hadn't come to where you were at. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you. Amen, amen. So many of those old songs had it right. Amen. We used to sing, when I think about his goodness and all he's done for me. Sometimes true worship, that's all it takes. Sometimes I'm with you. I'm guilty of coming in here and we're thinking about other things, right? God's trying to move and I'm thinking about what I, something I'm facing this week or something, some trip I'm going to take later in the week. We need to put everything out of our mind. Amen. God's worthy of our very best. Amen. He wants to move in here today. Let me tell you something about your week. You don't know what you're going to face this week, but he does. You don't know what you're going to walk through on Monday, but he does. And if you'll put everything out of your mind, forget about everything you got beyond this moment. Forget about everything that's going to happen this week or take place. And let's worship him. God will move in this house today. Oh, he wants to do so much more than he's doing right now. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. There is such a sweet, powerful presence of the Lord in here this morning. I feel like it's a throwback. Amen. I, I'm so thankful that the Lord found me, aren't you? Aren't you thankful that he came looking for you one day? Some of you have been raised on Pentecostal pews. You've been in this all your life. Don't ever let it get old to you. Amen. I don't ever want to forget what it's like for the first time to walk in and find the Lord. Somebody's in this service today. It may be your first time. You haven't been born again. You're in the right place today to be born again for God to change your life before you leave here today. You don't have to leave like you came because there's a God here that loves you today and he's reaching down to you and if you'll reach up just a little bit, he'll touch you and he'll change your life in this house today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. We're getting ready to go to the Lord, and we're going to worship him again. Let's remain standing as we take our needs to the Lord. Amen. So many of you are back today. You were gone last week. Amen. You've been battling COVID and other things, but amen. God's greater than all things that we face. Amen. I see hands going up all over the house. Those of you that are still battling today and joining, we're believing God with you that he's going to touch you and bring you through. Amen. Because we serve a God who... You know, I thought about it. We're all nurses, right? Spiritually, we're all nurses. We can help people. We can pray with you. We can, take, we can do the job of a nurse, but there's only one physician. He is the great physician. We pray with you, but it's God that's got to touch you. We're going to invite you, if you've got a need in your life today, to make your way down to this altar, and we're going to be good nurses. Our pastor, our team will pray for you. Wear your mask if you come. Amen. But it's Jesus that's going to touch you. He is the great physician. He made the body. There's certainly nothing he can't perform on the body today. Amen. We serve a God who's greater than any problem we face. If you have a need in your life today, why don't you slip up your hand all over this house. Amen. Needs, hands all over the house. Those of you that are joining online, we ask that you would put in the comments, and that's the way you can turn your needs in, and God will see that today. So go ahead and type in a need that you may have today. Oh, there's a spirit. I just felt that. I, did you feel that move into this house? The great physician's here today. He's here right now. Amen. All over this house, as we begin to pray, if you make your way down to the front, if you have a need in your life right now. Amen. Come on, saints of God, all over this house. Let's, 
Lift up faith here. No Lord, we love you today. Touch, you Lord, every need and every problem. Jesus, Jesus came. Lord, we love you today. We love you today. No one can oh, give you peace. You cannot understand. No one can bind your wounds with a nail scar. No one can touch you like Jesus.
can we clap our hands to that great God right now? Do you love him today? Are you thankful for his goodness? Are you thankful for his mercy? Blessed are they who have a broken and a contrite spirit. God is moving in this place today. I believe hearts are being touched. Hearts of stone, I believe, are being turned to a heart of clay. Father, right now we ask that you would have your way in the remaining part of this service. God, I pray you would touch everyone in this building and those that are watching online. Let your will be done. We love you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Can we clap our hands to the Lord this morning? Amen, 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 amen. Kids can be dismissed at this time. Thankful for our Sunday school teachers. You may be seated. Also, our Connect Point class. If you're in our Connect Point class, please. Certainly, we ask that you would join us for the 11 o'clock service if you are doing that. But so good to have all of our guests today. So good to have Logan Vincent and Allie Watts with us today. We love you guys. Welcome home, Logan. Amen, amen, amen. So good to see each of you, those that have been sick. Certainly you have been in our thoughts and prayers, and we're glad to have you back home today. So good to have Brother Lance's adopted mother, Sister Michelle Larson. We're honored that you're here today. We welcome you to life at Tupelo. Amen. Amen. So good to have all of our guests. If you're visiting with us today, we welcome you. So good to see Jeff and Brenda Wallace back today. Thank you so much for being here, friends of Danielle. She works with Danielle Hicks. Honored to have you guys back. And so good to see Marvin this morning. Been praying for you. Missed you last Sunday. Good to see you back today. And uh, the rest of you folks, we just claim you as home folk. Amen. 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 And I uh, hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And uh Hopefully you don't weigh more today than you did last weekend. Hopefully you ate in moderation. And uh, we do hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. My wife and I had the opportunity to be with my family in Columbia. We enjoyed spending a little time with them. And uh, certainly, as was mentioned, keep those that are sick in your prayers. And also, we want to remember two very special families in our church and that is the Moore family and also the Keith and the Lee family. Brother and Sister Moore lost their son, Tim, uh, this past week, and that service was yesterday, and I participated in that. But remember, Brother Tommy and Sister Susan Moore, and also uh, Brother Jerry Keith lost his wife this week. That is also Sister Sonja Lee's mother. Certainly, we want to remember that family. Bishop Hill participated in that service yesterday, a graveside. But let's continue to lift them up, those that are going through the lily of the valley. Amen. Going through the valley, Jesus is the lily of the valley. And may God comfort them and, and give them peace in the midst of the storm. This Wednesday night is Mosaic. Don't forget that. Everyone will be in the sanctuary. Pastor will be preaching. I will be beginning a series that I will continue through the first three Sundays of December. And so you can come. You can invite your friends. But I'm going to be teaching, preaching about how not to have a blue Christmas. With all that's going on in 2020, there's a lot of people that are facing uncertainty, but I'm going to be preaching about how not to have a blue Christmas. I look forward to preaching Wednesday night and the next three Sundays, so I encourage you to invite your friends and family, and we want to pack this place out. I believe before the end of the year, we can be over 300 in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Today, it's such an honor to have a friend of mine with us. Uh, Brother Jason Avan, he was in the area. He preached for us back in 2018 on a Wednesday night while he was serving as the assistant pastor of Lighthouse in Jackson, Tennessee. And he has since transitioned, he and his lovely wife and son, London, to St. Louis, Missouri. And he is the promotions director for uh, two ministries. One is men's ministry, but also he is also involved in discipleship now. 
and uh, doing a great job, and he was in the area, and I asked him to come and to preach for us today. And I wonder, can we give Brother Jason Avan a life in Tupelo welcome as he comes to preach the Word of God this morning? Love you, buddy. Say praise the Lord. I wonder if we could stand one more time and lift up our hands and lift up our voices right now. Let's give God some adoration. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Anoint the man of God. Lift your voice right now. We serve a great God. Jesus, have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anoint him, God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Come on, say how great, how great is our God. One more time, lift your voice and sing how great, how great is our God. Oh. Jesus This morning, this service, this morning service is going to be different. I'm just going to obey the Holy Ghost that's in this house right now. Are you cool with that? Is that all right? If you want to hear what I was going to preach, come back at 11 o'clock. But I want to minister for a moment. And, and I'm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's what David said. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Pause. When the name of the Lord is involved, he can't do nothing but succeed. When his name is at stake, you can guarantee that everything is going to be all right. I don't think everybody got that. Look at your neighbor and say, everything's going to be all right. For his name's sake, David, in those first three verses, declared who God was. My shepherd, and I shall not want. The totality is that he maketh me to lie down. God realizes sometimes in the hustle and bustle especially concerning the current chaos of our climate and conditions of where we live at, we need to find rest. We're so ignorant sometimes that we just think we can take everything into our own hands and we wear ourselves out trying to figure out everything. God's into the details. Let him worry about it. That's a word for someone this morning. And then David shifts and he begins to prophesy over himself. Yea, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they come for me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Did you get that part right there? There comes a season when you prophesy over your own life that the enemies have to sit there and watch God bring you through. I feel in this room right now, there are people that have been literally trying to find your way through, trying to navigate from one moment to the next, and you're worn out, you're weary, you're tired, and you're sad. It's not just the pandemic. It's just life. Life has a way of zapping the strength out of us, but I just want to tell you, the devil is a liar. God is still on the throne, and there's nothing too hard for our God to handle. And there is a breakthrough, I believe, in this house before we leave that it's going to force the adversary to sit there and watch that God's got a table prepared for you and it's going to be a feast that you'll never run hungry. You're never going to be thirsty. It's going to fill you up. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Come on. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Anybody thankful for his presence? Anybody thankful for the joy of the Lord, which is our strength? Somebody shout hallelujah and clap your hands with everything you've got inside of you and lift your voice and shout, what a mighty God we serve. be seated for a moment. Just stay right there, Sister Carney. Hear me, I'm not going to be long. I know you've got plans, and, and I, I want to be respectful of the time zone, but, but, but listen, listen to me very carefully. There are three things that are attacking the church and the people of God right now. It's called depression. It's called anxiety, and it's called fear. L listen, stay with me. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I want to I obey God. Thank you for letting me be here, Brother Carney. By the way, it's an honor. We, we deal with depression. It's something we experience now in the present from things that have happened in the past. We lost a loved one and we deal with depression. I know this to be true. I see our, our friends, the Veleys back there, who are wonderful, beautiful people of God. We are so thankful for them and new beginnings and, and, and God giving us a baby Eight years. It's hard to believe he's going to be nine in April. That little squirt is a pistol now. He's not here. He's with his family and my wife and them are in Memphis. But my little boy, uh, almost two years ago, began telling my wife about how he would love to have a sibling. And after prayer, my, my boy every night would lay beside my wife in our bed and he would just put her hand on her, his hand on her abdomen. He would say, Lord, Bless mommy with a baby. I pray that she will be pregnant. Lord, let my mommy get pregnant. That's all he ever prayed. Bishop, he just prayed, Lord, let mommy get pregnant. And it was in March of 2019 that we found out that my wife, who for the 12 years of our marriage could never conceive a child, finally found out that she was pregnant. And God worked a miracle just in that all by itself. But it was at the 20-week mark, as I was preparing to step into the pulpit, preached that afternoon in Jackson that my phone rang, and, and, and I knew when I saw the tag. Now, my wife's tagline in my phone is not wifey. It says this, a fine lady. And she called, and it's got a fire symbol beside it. Some of y'all get that at lunch on Wednesday, Hallelujah. But I knew when I saw the number, something was wrong. And she said, baby, this is an emergency. We have to go to the hospital. And so we rushed her to the hospital. What should have been about a 20-minute drive was nine minutes. I was praying the whole way that God would bind and blind every cop, that I would not get pulled over in my emergency situation. Not one, not two, but three different doctors told us, there's nothing we can do. You're going to lose your baby. And we lost our baby at 20 weeks. My wife gave birth to a stillborn 
little girl named Willow. And it was on that Thursday, or Tuesday night, rather, the night after my wife had given birth to that lifeless little 20-week developed body. Not a fetus, a baby. Not some easy task to deal with. I could feel depression was entering our hospital room as my wife was holding our sweet willow. And I, 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 I had to get my mind cleared, and so I decided to take a shower and get refreshed so I could be there to comfort my wife and do what I could. And as I was getting ready to come out of the bathroom in that, in that hospital room, Pastor, I remember looking up and saying, God, what have I done wrong to deserve this trial? Is this all right? And I've never heard an audible voice, not before then and not since then. And it's as if God himself had come down from heaven and wrapped me in his arms. And I heard, as clear as I'm standing here today, it's not that you've done anything wrong. It's what you've done right that I trust you with this trial. My mind went back to my favorite character in the Bible, Job. Job was a just man. Job was a fair man. Job was minding his own business when Satan was walking to and fro. And the Lord looked down and he said, hey, what you doing down there? And he, he said, well, I'm just, you know, you know me, I'm the devil. You ought to know by now what's up. And God said, have you not considered my servant Job? The test and the trials, man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The test and the trials that Job went through was not because he had done anything wrong. And it was not even a test of Job's faith in God. It was as God was looking down saying, Job, I have faith in you. And what proved that be true was the fact that Job, when he could have thrown the towel in and walked away and said, what's the point? This is not even, this is not even fair. This, what have I done to deserve this? Job, the Bible tells us, rent his garments, grabbed a razor, shaved his head, fell upon the ground, and he worshiped. And the Bible says that he declared, naked came I out, my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. But then he seals it up by saying, blessed be the name of the Lord. I remember declaring that night that depression was not going to destroy my family. And I declared that just because we lost a baby, it's not going to dictate how cruel God is. No, he promised that we would never go through something that we could not carry. That if we got too burdened, we could lay aside the weight. If it got too difficult, we could cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. I just want to tell you right now, depression is not a discredit for God's destiny. It's just a season, and it will not last forever. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. So we begin to move forward, and then my wife starts dealing very intensively so with this thing called anxiety. It's because it's overwhelming, and she's freaking out. And I don't know what to do with it because I didn't understand anxiety. I've never dealt with anxiety before. I mean, I just, I, I'm trying to be strong. I'm trying to be there for my wife. I'm trying to be that strength for my little boy, London. You got to remember, my boy is now eight. At the time, he was seven. And we were leaving to take my mother and my sister back to the, to the airport. And my mom was, was just distraught. And so she stayed a couple extra days, actually. We, we get to this place called the main event in Memphis. And my wife, I can see she's having an anxiety attack. She's, her mom and dad's already gone and her sister's gone. And it's just us three and my mother. And she's just panicking, wondering, I can't deal with this right now. And my little boy climbs in the front seat in my wife's lap in the car. And he says, Daddy, he said, I just don't understand. I prayed. Why did God not answer my prayer? It was like the Holy Ghost gave me this inspiration, this light bulb. I said, wait a second, Bubba. Let me ask you a question. What did you pray for? He said, I, I just prayed that mommy would get pregnant. 
I said, there you go. God answered the prayer. And that's all London prayed for. That's all he knew to pray for. I wasn't going to let the adversary wreck his little mind at seven years old. I have a position I have to take. I have a stand to take. And I cannot let the adversary warp his mind at that young age to think, well, how am I ever going to trust him now if I couldn't trust him then? London looked at me. He said, you know what, Daddy? You're right. He did answer my prayer. He said, what a big God we serve. And went inside and got carnal and played video games. Rolled some dice and, and, and shuffleboard and just had a good time. But that anxiety was still there in my wife and she was worried. She couldn't control the present. Just a couple days later, after God gave me a word and I preached to the great congregation in Jackson, message of hope that God gave me, the same one I'm trying to tell right now in the nutshell, thumbnail version, and I'm almost finished. I came home, and one afternoon, our, our office, our church was literally two minutes from my house. I could pull out, make a right turn, and another right turn, and I was there at the church. And my wife is sitting at home shaking in fear because we don't know what tomorrow holds. And I began praying about these three things that we deal with right now in our current world. Depression, anxiety, and fear. We fear the unknown. We fear what will happen or what could happen. And that's when it dawned on me that the name of Jesus has so much power it's the same yesterday for all the depression of the things that has happened to your life. Same today for the anxiety that you feel right now, that things you can't control in this present moment, and also tomorrow. Same yesterday, today, and forever. And the fear that you don't have any control over. It's like when you speak his name, he eradicates every emotion that tries to destroy you and separate you from the love of God. Let me just go ahead and pause on this Sunday morning. I am almost finished. I'm going to tell you very carefully, if you walk out this place and you walk out the same way you came, it's not because God didn't do it. It's because some of us have become so comfortable with our emotional problems that we're afraid to lay aside the weight. It's as if we're a bad person because we're fighting depression. It's as if we're a bad person because we have anxiety attacks. It's as if we're a bad person because we fear, hey, if you've been depressed, if you fight anxiety, if you fight fear, guess what? You're normal. In a world that's consumed with so much negativity and the nuances of our society, it's about time for some good news. God is here in this house. I don't know what this family is going through right here, but when you walked down here and you started praying, I could sense the Holy Ghost. I stood there and I wept uncontrollably. I just want to tell you, everything's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. And this trial is not going to take you out. In fact, if you're not dead, that means God's not done. I want you to lift your hands one more time across this congregation. In fact, I dare you to stand your feet and throw those hands high into the heavens and raise your voice higher than your hands. And I pray right now that God of heaven would reach down on this blessed congregation. I declare life in the name of Jesus. I declare the power of the Holy Ghost right now. He Come on, God is for you. God is for you. Everything's going to be all right. Refuse to believe what the lies of the adversary says. God is really on your side. I believe you're my healer and I believe you are all I need somebody need to declare it right now and I believe you're my portion. I believe you're more than enough for me. Yes, Jesus, you're all I need. 
I don't know what you have need of today, but the healer's in this room right now. And I would dare you, if you got a mask up to get out of your pew, I dare you to come forth right now and receive that which you have need of. God is in this room. The healer's in this house. You're not here by accident on this Sunday morning. This is a design, destiny appointment for your life. Come on, sir. Your marriage does not have to be over. Come on, ma'am. Your prodigal doesn't have to live away from home. Come on, young people. You don't have to worry about your tomorrow. God has it all in control. God's a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. He's that light of the darkness for us. He's that joy that we've got coming for the morning time, for all the times we wept tonight, for the tears that we have sowed. Joy is coming. Peace is on its way. Come on, lift your voice right now. Come on, lift your voice in this house right now. Nothing is impossible, Lord. Come on, let's say, let the Holy Ghost move right now. Lift your voices in this house. Lift your voices in this house. I need some intercessory to go forth. Those of you that are not comfortable coming forward, we understand. But if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, I want you to stretch your hands forth right now. And I want you to pray the blessings of God. Let the King of Glory come in this room right now. Come on, let the Holy Ghost minister in this room. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes my answer will be yes my answer will be yes Thank you. 
that's here and those that are watching online. The enemy has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy your life, your family, everything about you. But he said, I am come that they may have life and may have life more abundantly. And all you have to do is say yes to Jesus Christ. All you have to do is say yes to him. You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have it all figured out. But I do believe if you'll say yes to him, yes to his will, and yes to his way, God will be with you. Amen? I encourage you to be obedient to what you have heard today. Be obedient to God's voice. Be obedient to the man of God's voice and be obedient to his word. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. The Lord knew what we needed to hear. He had a sermon prepared. It wasn't the one he gave, but he ministered in the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen? And I'm thankful that a man of God will obey the Spirit of God to do what God says to do at that particular point in time. As your pastor, I love you. I'm here for you. We are better together. Amen? Certainly, uh, I was made mention a while ago that Barbara lost her brother this week. We want to remember Barbara and that family in our prayers and uh, that God would strengthen them during this storm. And uh, certainly uh, let Sheena and these ladies know we're praying for Barbara and everything that she's going through. If you have her number, please try to call her. She don't do text very well, but she does do uh, her phone. But uh, certainly remember Barbara and her family and uh, so good to see each of you. Can we just pray one more time before we go? Father, we thank you for your spirit that we feel. God, I plead the blood over every family. God, I thank you for what you've done today. God, we just say yes to you. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. Wrap your loving arms around about every individual and every family. Let them know that you love them. Let them know that you care. Let them know that their pastor loves them. God, we're here to say yes to you, Lord. Forgive us of our sins, oh Lord. Help us to become all you've called us to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Please let Brother Avent know we enjoyed having him today. Certainly, if you would like to hear what else he's going to preach, come back at 11. Certainly watch online if you have to leave. Thank you so much for coming. Don't forget Wednesday night, prayer at 7, service at 7.30. And uh, so good to have all of our guests today. Thank you so much for being here. We pray that you have been blessed. Be careful going in and out. Wear your mask if you're close to one another. Use the hand sanitizing stations. But I love you. God bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.